Hey guys, uh, today we're talking about enclomiphene, um, how you can get it, what it is, what the FDA thinks about it, why I have it. I'm on TRT, why do I have enclomiphene? Uh, so first of all, enclomiphene is a CIRM, selective estrogen receptor modulator. What that does is it blocks the uh, estrogen receptor in the hypothalamus of your brain, it tricks your brain into thinking you have less estrogen than you actually do. So your brain signals your testicles with the hormones LH and FSH signals your testicles to produce more testosterone and, and uh, sperm. And that's how it uh, increases testosterone production uh, as a monotherapeutic agent as well as an NPCT. So that's what a serum is. And um, I've got a bottle of it right here. Right there. So I got 25 milligram enclomiphene tablets. It's not banned by the FDA. I know a lot of people think it is. It's not. Um, it's futures looking a little sketchy, but we'll go into that. Uh, how did I get my hands on it? Great question, buddy. Um, I got my hands on it through a TRT clinic. Uh, TRT clinics that offer shipping are usually partnered with remote compounding pharmacies such as Hollandale, Revive, and Empower. And these compounding pharmacies are still compounding in clomiphene, and they'll ship it straight to your door. So all you got to do is find a TRT clinic that offers shipping. You can ask them ahead of time if they offer enclomiphene. And um, yeah, my opinion, it's a great drug for people who uh, are, have secondary hypogonadism and want to use it as a monotherapy. Also superior to clomid, in my opinion, well, for both monotherapy and PCT. Uh, people are just starting to catch on to this, I feel like, um, even though it's been around a little bit. So uh, that's how you get it. What does the FDA think about it? The FDA doesn't like it. The FDA doesn't, doesn't want to have compounding pharmacies using it, okay? Not, maybe not the FDA specifically, but the, uh, the uh, Pharmacy Compounding Drug Advisory Committee, which is part of the FDA, may advise on whether or not to include drugs on the, in the 503A bulks list, which is a list of drugs that are allowed to be compounded by compounding pharmacies. Um, now, this advisory committee went over the clinical data and deemed that it had a slightly less uh, F, uh, slight less favorable safety profile than other forms of testosterone replacement or monotherapies in that it would had a slighter, slightly increased risk for clotting. It also uh, deemed that just because it increased semen parameters did not mean it uh, actually translated to increased fertility. Um, and they said just because it increases LH and FSH and testosterone does not mean it uh, reduces subjective low testosterone symptoms, which they did not measure, admittedly. They, they, did not, they did not measure that. They said that in their second to last slide. And then on their last slide said that um, it did not improve subjective testosterone, low testosterone symptoms. So how do you not measure whether or not somebody feels better on a drug for low testosterone and then say it doesn't reduce low testosterone symptoms? You have to fucking measure the thing. I don't know if somebody fucked up on the slides or what, but that was in their presentation because I watched it. Um, you can find it on YouTube. You have to go fucking in an hour 30 or something to actually get to the presentation on clomiphene. So that doesn't mean it's banned. It just means that the advisory committee is saying, hey, we don't think it's any better than the other drugs out here for monotherapy uh, for people for secondary hypogonadism or just regular TRT. Um, so they advised against putting it in the list of compound of drugs available to be compounded by compounding pharmacies, which I think is horseshit. And now I'll get into why. Number one, increased FSH and LH uh, obviously is going to increase testosterone production. And increased testosterone production most of the time is going to re uh, resolve low testosterone symptoms. Now, sometimes it doesn't. Some people on clomiphene don't feel great. Fine. Um, for example, Clomid. Clomid increases FSH and LH and increases testosterone, but a lot of people have side effects. Why is that? Well, Clomid is two isomers, includes two isomers. Um, I'm going to go Khan Academy, Khan Academy on your ass here for a second. Okay, I'm not a chemistry dude, but this is my basic understanding. An isomer is a chemical compound with the same chemical formula, so it contains the same amount of carbon atoms, same amount of hydrogen atoms, etc., um, but it has a different chemical structure. So the actual physical shape of uh, the chemical compound is different. And just because because of this, uh, the difference in physical shape or structure, um, it interacts with the biological systems of your body differently. Now, clomid contains two isomers and includes 
zuclomiphene and inclomiphene, which I just showed you and has been isolated. Zuclomiphene agonizes the estrogen receptor in the brain. Oopsie, that's not what we want. We want to antagonize the estrogen receptor in the brain because that tricks your brain into thinking you have low estrogen, so it sends the output to your testicles to improve and increase testosterone production. Agonizing the estrogen receptor in the hypothalamus is gonna do the opposite of that. So having two of those isomers in one drug is going to increase side effect risk and they're gonna act against each other. Now, Clomid is approved by the FDA to be prescribed to women and also it's prescribed off-label to men as a monotherapy agent and uh, sometimes for PCT. I mean, I, well, people use it for PCT all the fucking time, um, but most of the time they don't get it through a doctor for PCT, although I'm sure sometimes you could. Um, so I don't see how isolating the more favorable isomer out of Clomid and uh, Sorry, brain dies every once in a while, so just fucking give me a second. I don't see how isolating the favorable an estrogenic antagonistic isomer of Clomid um, makes it less favorable and, and something that you wouldn't want to include in the 503A bulks list to be compounded by compounding pharmacies, considering the mechanism of action is better than Clomid alone or Zuclomiphene, the other isomer. And it improves semen parameters, FSH, LH, and testosterone production. And they didn't they didn't measure for subjective resolution of low T symptoms. So I see a lot of like little holes in their in their fucking reasons why they don't want to include it in the bulks list. Um, I think it's a, a far superior than clomid for both monotherapy and PCT purposes. And uh, you know. Sadly, actually, while I was watching their presentation, you know, there, there are some people who dropped out for adverse events, like um, one of them couldn't get a boner, so he dropped out. <laughs> That's pretty, I think he's, you know, you get paid for doing that, right? It's like, he, he must have really wanted his boner back. I mean, it's not forever, but anyway, he dropped out, and then there was another couple that dropped out because of, uh, well, they died because they got in a car crash, so that was unrelated. I was like, I don't know, that fucking sucks. Um, Anyway, they were like, we deem this as probably unlikely to be related to the enclomiphene supplementation. I was like, yeah, probably. Probably dying in a car crash wasn't caused by enclomiphene. Good job, FDA. Anyway, that's the scoop on enclomiphene, guys. It's still available in the United States to be prescribed. Is it going to be around for a while? You know, compounding pharmacies are saying they're not too worried about it, but also they're selling the drug, so they want you to buy it. Um, everyone's got a fucking bias and motive. So who knows about whether or not it's going to be available in the future. Maybe there will be a branded drug version. Maybe there'll be more clinical trials and more evaluation. There's not been a final say by the FDA on whether or not they want to ban it or, you know, completely restrict it from the 503A bulks list. Um, so we don't know right now, but you can, uh, order it. And a lot of these TRT clinics are like foreseeing that it might not be available. And they're saying fucking buy your supply. I don't care. And so you can just buy a fuck ton of enclomiphene through them. And, uh, uh, you don't need to have a really high dose. Uh, so you can have a lot of enclomiphene stacked up. Um, it's unfortunate for monotherapy because monotherapy means you're going to be using it for a very, very long time. Um, there's some risks to that, you know, with vision and stuff, just like clomid, but there's been no longitudinal studies on it, studies on it. It's just all theoretical. Um, anyway, why do I have it? I have it because my neurologist, uh, <laughs> I have a working diagnosis. You guys can click off now, basically. But I have a working diagnosis of autoimmune encephalitis by my, di uh, by my neurologist, which means inflammation of the brain. You can see right now, I can talk in videos. I'll have little brain farts and stuff. I seem okay, right? I seem like a pretty normal dude. I'm tripping acid all fucking day, dude. And it's not DPDR, okay? I've got getting off of a, a antipsychotic as strong as Zyprexa, which I got off of, gives you DPDR, depersonalized, depersonalization, derealization disorder. Um, it wasn't disorder. I would just have moments of it. So I know what that's like. Your boy's brain is fucked up. I'm tripping on acid all the time. It feels agitated. Um, I can't think straight. Like, uh, I, I know my performance in these videos seems pretty good. It would be a lot better if I were fucking normal. Um, I spent a lot of the day in fucking bed because I'm just miserable. I got horrible malaise in my head. And Last winter, though, holy shit, before I got three rounds of corticosteroids, which are anti-inflammatory, which is why I have a working diagnosis of autoimmune encephalitis, 
the sensations that I would have were fucking horrifyingly torturous. I would have feelings of my brain, like my brain iced over to the point where I couldn't feel anything. And it felt like my brain was suffocating of oxygen. So it was like being, it was like being alive. It was like suffocating at all times, but you never died. So that was fucking horrible. And then I would have this intense agitation. Like I felt like I was buried under a box in a box, a thousand feet below the earth's surface and just claustrophobic as fuck. And I couldn't do anything. I just sit there just fucking so agitated. Like I wanted to fucking smash something, you know? And it was, so that was horrible. Not to mention I was psychotic for fucking months. Um, auditory hallucinations, visions that were so like, extremely vivid and graphic and gory and that was a fucked up time dude um need a lot of therapy to undo that shit uh i know i'm gonna get some dumb theories in the bottom in the comments like long covid or you know you did some bad acid or stop doing drugs i don't do drugs i can't drink a cup of coffee i can't have a beer um i haven't had a beer or a cup of coffee in a fucking year dude imagine what that's like as a 26 year old guy who loves beer and coffee it fucking sucks and working out i can't work out because it destroys my sleep and it destroys my nervous system um anyway uh that was a lot <laughs> my uh neurologist originally suspected the testosterone to be a contributing factor because both my brother and i have this disease or condition um and we we're both on testosterone, so she, so she wanted me off, and uh, I fought her on that. I I fought her on that. Eventually, got her to give me corticosteroids, which which led to improvement. And she kind of dropped it. She dropped the subject. Um, but now, you know, I'm at the point where my symptoms are not completely resolved. Granted, they are way better than they were this past winter. I, I mean, it doesn't matter how much I describe it. It was fucking absolute torture. Um, uh, that's as best as I, that's all I can say is it was torture. It doesn't matter how much I describe it. I know people won't, won't, won't quite get it. It was absolute fucking torture every moment, every day for months and months. Um, so things are better now. I can make a video. I'm still tripping balls all the time. You know, I went to the park the other day and I'm looking around and just the people running around at the park just makes my brain fucking glitch out and my brain's not good. I did a neuropsych test. I'm fine, except for attention. My attention's always been poor, though. I've been diagnosed with ADHD. Uh, I'm cognitively all there for the most part. I definitely couldn't do, like, studying or go to school or whatever, but that's probably pretty good for my prognosis. Um, whatever. Why do I have enclomiphene? I am trying to PCT off if I can. My brain is so touchy. Like I said, I can't have half a shot of vodka. I can't have a sip of coffee. Um, so getting off of testosterone is, the difficulty is amplified. It's like Dark Souls mode PCT. Um, but I foresee that um, my brother and I are going to be going to a larger institution. Don't know where yet. We're going to need a referral. But uh, I have a feeling that they're going to want me off the testosterone because that's... Uh, that's uh, something that both my brother and I are taking and we both have the same condition. So I'm going to try to PCT off to the best of my ability and I'll keep you guys updated on that. If I'm successful, I'll provide labs, what dosages I used, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I just don't fucking know because my brain is too sensitive and yeah. Anyway, we'll see, we'll see. But that's why I have enclomiphene. It's available for you if you want it. I recommend if you're a young dude, you got low T, um, secondary hypogonadism, um, and you want to try something, try enclomiphene. It has some risks associated with vision and stuff like that. We don't know yet for sure. Um, but certainly it's a useful tool uh, along SARM, alongside SARM cycles, for example. If I were to go back in time when I first did SARM cycles, which was probably what eventually led to my alcoholic addiction, which led to me getting on TRT. Um, if I could go back and I had enclomiphene, fuck, yeah, dude. I would have done my SARM cycle using enclomiphene to keep me from being suppressed because suppression um, fucking sucks. What is suppression? It's low testosterone. Suppression is just a soft word for having your tea crushed. Um, it's just soft language, so that doesn't seem as bad. Um, but yeah, I would have fucking used enclomiphene for that. Uh, enclomiphene for PCT off of SARMs is also totally valid. Enclomiphene for PCT 
uh, off of steroids also perfectly valid, although usually you'd use HCG uh, while the testosterone clears your system to resensitize your testicles, um, get them ready to start receiving a signal from your brain. Anyway, uh, that's a lot of information and rambling there. I just figured while I got the majority of the people watching for the first 10 minutes, I'd just ramble for the next five about random shit that's going on in my life. Um, <laughs> I literally, like... I, I can only make these vi videos when I have enough benzo in me to not be in fucking complete agony. And that's what I said to somebody yesterday on Reddit. Reddit. So I know I seem like I'm okay. I'm fucking not okay, dude. I'm having a really rough time. Um, uh, whatever. You're not my therapist, I guess. But uh, I'm at my parents' place for the time being. I've got a place uh, of my own that's uh, empty. Um, but I'm at my parents' places. I can't fucking take care of myself to the better, you know, I just can't. Um, and I need to be around people right now. Um, yeah. Anyway, I spend uh, a lot of time on, uh, a lot of time on Reddit because cognitively I'm all there, you know, and, and Reddit for me, working on my subreddit, talking to people is a good distraction from the constant pain that I'm in. Um, hate to bitch, but, uh, and fucking just enjoy your life, man, because my life fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it for today. Hope that was informational and helpful to you. And let me know if you have questions. Um, yeah, bye.